Hi, I'm Michael Martin. I'm a staff scientist here at the Advanced Light Source at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. I run the infrared beam line, and uh, we do a lot of different science using uh, infrared light with the uh, synchrotron. The synchrotron gives us a very high brightness uh, source of light. And what that means is that we can focus the light down to a very, very small spot. In fact, it's as small as the wavelength of the light. Um, so it's as good as you can do. And so by doing that, we can measure things that are of order a micron or a few microns in dimension. Some of the interesting samples we've been looking at over the past years include things like human cells. Human cells are typically 10-ish microns in size, and so now we can look at the chemistry that's happening within one cell at a time. That gives us the ability to then look at what happens to a cell when something is happening to that cell. So in other words, like if you give it a drug or you give it something that, um, that will hurt the cell, we can look at how the cell's natural defenses kick on and try to study that as a function of time, try to see how, how well a drug works, do different things like this. Similarly, we can also look at uh, bacteria. Bacteria um, oftentimes are very involved in environmental science, and uh, by that I mean we're looking at bacteria in the natural environment of rocks, soils, uh, and so forth, and oftentimes with pollution or something else that's in the environment that we really don't want to be in the environment. So we're trying to understand how the bacteria can live in highly polluted environments or extreme environments, what kinds of proteins they make, what kinds of uh, uh, things they can do to remediate these types of uh, um, uh, insults to them. And so we've learned quite a bit about how, uh, how bacteria are able to uh, take care of different types of environmental pollution problems, and therefore we can speed up this whole process and really try to clean up the environment. A third example is looking at uh, samples from outer space. In this case, we're looking at uh, samples from the Stardust mission. This was a NASA mission where um, a, a spacecraft flew around and through the tail of a comet. As it went through the tail of the comet, it put out a big catcher's mitt, basically, a big catcher of uh, aerogel, and little particles were collected in this aerogel. This uh, catcher was then closed back up into the spacecraft and that uh, came back to Earth and landed back in, uh, in 2007 on Earth. And so we now have a whole bunch of these uh, samples of the pristine um, little bits of minerals and other uh, interesting things that have come off this comet. We use the infrared beam line to study what types of minerals they are, what types of other organics are, are in this uh, um, uh, in these types of uh, samples, and it really gives us some really nice pristine samples from outer space. These are the first samples that have been returned from uh, beyond Earth since the uh, Apollo missions went to the moon. The, uh, the last example I'll share with you is uh, looking at some physics samples. Um, the, one of the hot new materials is called graphene. This is a single atomic layer of graphite, so it's one atomic layer of carbon. And uh, this one atomic layer has really fascinating properties because it's exactly two-dimensional the conduction uh, behaves really quite differently than normal materials, normal metals. Um, they will have a, what's called ballistic transport, that means the electrons can go very fast through, the, um, uh, through this material, and you can get um, really nice conductivity. We've been, uh, we're able to actually see this one layer of carbon by eye, which is really amazing, because now that means that it has such a strong um, optical optical uh, properties that it actually changes its color just enough that even with your naked eye you can see one single layer of atoms. I think that's the only example out there where you can actually see one layer of atoms and how it's different. We measure with the infrared microscope again now these, these small samples where we add voltage, we can add uh, uh, current, we can add, make a, a little structure out of these and we're able to show that we're able to tune this between being a metal, between being a semiconductor just by changing the voltage. So now you can imagine making a computer chip out of this, these materials, where now you can decide just by turning on and off different voltages where you want the processor part, where you want the wire parts of a computer chip. So this can make it um, not only much, much faster um, and cooler than a silicon chip can run, uh, but also much more flexible that you can build whole different types of new systems with, uh, with graphene that we couldn't even imagine today. So those are a few examples of the science that we're doing here um, at the ALS at the infrared beam line. Thanks.